Well, good evening. It's another stagnant, cloudy day, but we've got changes coming up. Big Pacific system starting to make the big climb across the Rocky Mountains, and it's going to be in our area in a couple days. Here's what the situation looks like for today. That stagnant front pretty much in the same position as yesterday, but the warm front is starting to lift very slowly north up towards the Lubbock and Hobbs area. We've already got elevated thunderstorms in the Lubbock area, and we'll take a closer look at that shortly. Once we add the fronts, uh, we do get a, a much better look at what's happening, and you can see that very persistent easterly flow there in Oklahoma in the Texas Panhandle, and with the winds having a northerly component, that's gonna resist the front moving very quickly northward. Temperatures in the low to mid 50s in the Los Angeles area with winds light northerly. And a very cold day in the Sacramento area with 43 degrees. There's a look at the southwest from the excellent College of DuPage uh, satellite interface. So you can see the bands of mid and upper level clouds very distinctly there. And that'll put the front kind of on the east side of that. Some very impressive mountain wave activity. Look up there and the uh, Bryce Canyon area, some impressive mountain wave activity there. And convective cloud bands coming on onto the coast in the Los Angeles, Ventura, and Santa Barbara area. It's going to be a little bit of a showery day in that area with the cold core low close at hand. Getting some very strong precipitation in the deformation zone in northern California. You can see that very strong easterly flow there, pushing that uh, nimbostratus and altostratus in a southwestward direction. So it's given us a bit of a rainy day there. Uh, this is part of that big comma cloud that kind of wraps around like that. So a lot of weather to look at in California and Nevada. Down in Texas, a bit unsettled, but uh, we know that we've got that stationary front cutting through the central part of the state, becoming a warm front up in Colorado. And over the dome of cold air, there's those elevated thunderstorms in the Lubbock and Memphis, Texas area. And with more southwesterly flow coming up and riding over that cold dome, we'll probably see more storms firing in that area there around Lubbock. Not much change in the southeast U.S. We're continuing that easterly flow with anticyclonic southeasterly winds coming up onto the Gulf, pushing that moisture up into the southern U.S. And then in the northeast U.S., there's that new batch of cold air coming southeastward, getting a little bit of lake effect uh, clouds on the east shore of Lake Huron and east shore of Lake Superior there. So things are going to be a little bit cloudy for the next day or so, and probably by tomorrow we're going to see some rapid clearing as that cold air builds in. So we return to West Texas. It might help to have a little bit of geography on there, since we can't really see anything. Fortunately, College DuPage gives us a very nice map interface. We'll throw in the counties. U.S. interstates, and uh, yeah, I think that'll do it. So what do we got going on? We've got kind of a mess. We've got a lot of cirrus working over the area. That's associated with that southern stream polar front jet coming across the area. We've also got some stratus and stratocumulus representing the tropical moisture feeding northward. See those elements there? Uh, we're talking about this area down here. A little bit of cumulus and stratocumulus there. Also some right there. So that's the moisture riding up across the warm front and heading north. We've also got some stratus and more patchy stratocumulus right there. That's probably representing some of the deeper moisture, some of the higher relative humidities. We've also got convective elements. They're right up here. That's the elevated storms kind of rooted up there near the frontal inversion. And it looks like underneath we've got some convective debris down in there. 
The main disadvantage is we can't really see the low-level boundaries because of all the high overcast. So it becomes very important to use that surface analysis to keep tabs on what's happening. This is the pivotal weather chart, high resolution rapid refresh, showing the temperature field. And you can kind of see that thermal boundary. See how half of the chart is kind of red and purple, another half is kind of orange and yellow. So we can sort of trace that boundary like that. It's definitely got a very patchy appearance. And let's see, that brings us kind of like that. So that's the cold air that's hanging on but gradually starting to recede and it looks like we have some patchy colder more dense pockets of cold air there that may be reinforced by the ongoing convection but uh, that can definitely help lock down the cold air and keep that warm front from moving north now one trick for finding the boundaries using the model data is to load up one of the supercell composite or significant tornado parameters, something that's very dependent on shear, and roll it forward. And as we run that forward, watch this area here, you can see some indication of a discontinuity right there from about Dallas up to Amarillo. And as we run that forward, see how that becomes more evident? That's likely outflow. And that's helping to reinforce the warm front. So likely by mid-afternoon, we're looking at something like that. Uh, the warm front appears to have lifted north, but is being installed along that outflow boundary. And then as we go through the rest of the evening, you can see it looks like there's a bit of reinforcement due to the convection. And that'll kind of keep that boundary in place there. So we'll run the uh, dew point plot forward. So this is going to be about 21Z, and this demonstrates how you can kind of see the boundaries. It's not only the difference in the winds, but also the difference in the moisture across that boundary. And we can see evidence of another boundary there. And going forward a little bit more, yeah, we're definitely keeping that outflow kind of in place, sort of like that right there. So that's how it's going to look this evening. So what does that mean? Well, with the strong southwesterly flow, that means storms are going to have a very limited window to get going along that upflow boundary, and then they're going to depart very rapidly northeast into the cooler air. So if you're out chasing, you probably want to target that area from Lubbock to Guthrie, but you're going to have a very limited window, but you're going to have a very limited window of severe weather. One thing you might find helpful is my Severe Thunderstorm Forecasting book from several years ago. If we open it up, we can find something that applies to today. Got this chapter here on, kind of touches on the boundary orientation we have, the boundaries, and remember they're northwest, southeast, so storms will tend to move rapidly into the cold air once they get going. And yeah, that book is definitely available at weathergraphics.com. Please pick up a copy. But we do have some instability out there. See, this is the most unstable cape. It's going as high as 2600 in this yellow area. And as we get towards the late afternoon, looks like we pull out our highest values around 2122Z. And that's right around, uh, looks like even a little bit further south of Guthrie. So we'd be looking at maybe, let's see, what's in between there? Uh, south of Guthrie, I guess that'd be Knox City out towards Jayton, perhaps, or maybe maybe Dickens, somewhere in there. So if I was chasing, I would probably be thinking about perhaps that area there. But uh, let's look at your proximity sounding. We'll click in that uh, moist air mass there, and the soundings are going to be looking like this. We'll start out with the skew T. Now keep in mind this, yet, this white parcel here, this is going to be kind of best case scenario. You can see we're launching from like 77, 78 degrees. So most likely what we're actually going to have is going to be something like uh, something like that. Kind of a large sliver of maybe 1500 cape there. Very little capping so any storms will be 
probably numerous developing wherever they can get going and the wind profile without looking at the hodograph just kind of eyeball that looks like a little bit of clockwise turning a little bit of a weakness in the wind field from 850 to 700 and now we can go ahead and look at the hodograph there it is up there at the top right zero kilometer plot there one kilometer plot there they're not very well separated and the motion vector is not in the optimal position there so that's indicating very very little storm relative felicity and almost non-existent tornado potential but the atmosphere is sheared zero through six kilometer vector looks like that that's pretty decent so we're going to get some long-lived cells out of that the main problem of course very limited helicity and that weakness in the low to mid-level flow anvil ventilation also looks pretty decent six kilometers through the top of the storm getting about 20 30 knots there so i wouldn't totally rule out today for a chase day but i wouldn't count on seeing any tubes out there nothing like that storms are already ongoing so the spc meso analysis is not going to help you too much a lot of the conditions along the boundaries are going to be dominated by storm scale processes by outflow stuff like that and that's going to kind of distort the uh, the diagnostics that we see here so we're not going to use this too much but the upper level products are definitely useful here you can see the 850 millibar winds getting a feed of 20 to 25 knots up into these storms and the upper air analysis shows south southwest winds 45 knots and if you look upstream stronger winds back in West Texas approaching the area. So we know that as the day goes on, these higher winds are going to be approaching our storm area. So for this evening, this is about how the fronts are going to look. Not much change from the surface analysis. Looks like we kind of reinforce maybe a frontal position there between Idaho and Montana. Our system in the Great Basin area has lost some definition, but uh, we can find it according to that thickness field. See that gradient between low and high thickness values. There's how things look for tomorrow evening. We're seeing those upper level height falls really destabilizing things in the southern Rockies. The uh, cold front itself coming out into eastern New Mexico, starting to get an increase in shower activity out there in, in West Texas and a new batch of cold air coming in from the Dakotas and Montana and that's going to interact with that Colorado system so this is how it looks for Thursday night looks like maybe some frontalysis of the Pacific system either that or it kind of starts blending in I guess it's lost definition with that strong downslope and I would expect uh, some warm temperatures in northwest Texas due to that strong westerly wind. And the polar air coming out of Canada interacts with the low in Kansas, and we see some very strong definition there. Some snow in Minnesota and Nebraska. And this will be our last map out of the series for Friday night. Big high pressure moving into the Great Plains driving that front all the way down to Atlanta, Norfolk, Raleigh, and past Houston. So the winds will swing around to the north once again, and it will get cold. 540 line pushing all the way down to St. Louis and Indianapolis. So, I, I don't know, I'm not going to analyze the maps after this, but we can just go forward and take a quick look. And I think uh, what's going to be interesting is this area here. So we'll check that out yeah see how things are kind of unstable here we can imply that looking at the thickness we know that there's troughing out in this area so we're going to get another Pacific system coming in very rapidly and let's see when that happens yeah there, there comes one right there for Monday and another for Tuesday so I guess the front is maybe somewhere back in there and the next shot of weather for the plains uh, kind of a dry system there for late next week and then 
Yeah, there goes one for Friday. And wow, good blob of cold air up to the north, but looks like there's not much of a push behind that. Anyway, that's how it looks. I hope you enjoyed the weathercast, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.